Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about some really exciting news about the amateur astronomy around the world. Because once again the amateur astronomers were able to achieve something incredible. And this time they've discovered yet another exoplanet. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. When it comes to amateur astronomy, amongst other sciences, it has quite an interesting history. Specifically because amateur astronomers often push the limits of science to the point where even professional astronomers had to rely on their methods. One really good example is actually from 1939, when this wonderful person, the American by the name of Grote Reber, became the first ever radio astronomer in the world, and he maintained that title for roughly around 10 or so years. So his advances in radio astronomy were the reason we have so many professional radio astronomers today. In other words, radio astronomy sort of started with amateur astronomers. And pretty much every year now, there's a new announcement coming from amateur astronomers around the world, and often it actually is something that even professional astronomers couldn't achieve. And the best recent example of this is, of course, the uh, interstellar comet Borisov that was discovered by Gennady Borisov using his homemade telescope. And so every year the amateur astronomers get better and better at finding various types of objects. But when it comes to exoplanets, it's actually a little bit more challenging, simply because you do need a very very sensitive telescope. So the first discovery was back in 2006, this is the planet known as XO-1. And just like so many other discoveries when it comes to exoplanets, it was found by looking at the star directly and seeing the planet pass in front of it. The tiny dip in the light spectrum of the star was the indication to astronomers that there was a planet here. But in this case, it wasn't really a true amateur discovery, because the person running the program was actually a professional astronomer, even though he did use a lot of amateur astronomers to help him discover this object. But with time, the collaboration between amateur astronomers and professional astronomers became even stronger. We started getting projects like Mir that relied almost entirely on amateurs to discover new planets, and later on, all sorts of new projects available through the website known as Zooniverse, including the one that's going on right now known as Planet Hunters Test. And all of these websites rely on amateur astronomers to sift through data and to try to discover something and then collaborate with professional astronomers in trying to determine if a new planetary object was discovered. Several exoplanets have already been discovered this way. But in some sense, this is still not true amateur discovery because professional astronomers still had to either provide the data or in some cases even analyze the data as well. But then, in 2018, there was this paper that came out announcing the first amateur astronomy collaboration that was able to detect the first exoplanet discovered pretty much entirely by amateur astronomers. They did use some of the data coming from one of the observatories, but for the most part the data was analyzed and also produced by amateurs. And this was actually a big deal, because for the first time, the professional astronomers were no longer needed to detect planets. Everything could be done by amateurs, and all of the data and all of the um, actual analysis was done by amateur astronomers as well. This is really important, because it means that, for the first time ever, the detection of exoplanets was no longer just the realm of professional astronomers, and could now be done by pretty much anyone with the know-how and also the tools needed to analyze the data. And now, very recently, yet another international team with astronomers coming from various countries found another planet, the planet known as GJ3470C. With all of the observations and all of the data collected by various amateur astronomers like this wonderful person, Philip Scott from the US, who used his homemade 12.5 inch telescope to collect the transit data for this particular star. He was actually able to observe it three separate times, with the period difference of about 66 days, which of course means that this planet orbits around the star every 66 days. But this was a combined effort of everyone on the team, including the organizer, Alberto Caballero of Spain, who together with other observatories from around the world you see right here, were essentially responsible for discovering this object. All of the data was combined and analyzed together, but most importantly, all of this was done using tools available to everyone and off-the-shelves telescopes and camera lenses. In other words, by following the guidance of this team or even by joining this team, now pretty much anyone with a telescope and a good enough camera can join the discovery of various exoplanets out there. 
Earlier this week, Alberto was able to provide me with a little bit more information about what you need to actually do to start searching for exoplanets yourself, and you can find some of this information in the description below, including all of the information in regards to the cameras and telescopes you would need to try to look for exoplanets yourself. But in a nutshell, what you would need to try to do this yourself is of course a telescope, uh, dark enough skies to observe various stars, and be able to actually track that star with some sort of a tracker device that the telescope would be placed on, and of course you would need a very sensitive or a good enough camera to be able to distinguish these really really minuscule dips in the brightness of the star, which usually can be as low as 0.1%. In other words, you need to be able to collect all of this data using your camera and then save it somewhere and analyze it using a free software known as Astro Image J, which is available in the description below as well. Now, overall, it's not super difficult, but if you'd like to just observe the stars and not worry about the analysis, you can always join the Habitable Exoplanet Search team, and the link for the team is also in the description below. And in regards to the actual discovery, here's what we know about the star and the planet so far. First of all, the star itself is about 100 light years away from planet Earth, and it previously had this unusual Neptune-like object we discovered there that was peculiar because it was actually evaporating extremely quick compared to some of the other planets we've discovered. But by looking at the star system for pretty much 24 hours a day for several months, the amateur team was able to discover another Saturn-like planet slightly farther away. But since the star itself is what's known as an M-type, in other words, it's a red dwarf, and the planet orbits around 66 days around it, this sort of places this planet in the so-called habitable zone of the star system. And though the planet itself is probably a gas giant, it has a potential to have a moon with possibly liquid ocean on the surface. But this is obviously not something we're going to know anytime soon, because seeing these moons is very, very challenging. Nevertheless, once confirmed, this discovery is going to be really exciting, and most importantly, it will probably lead to even more amateur teams and amateur astronomers discovering even more things out there. And I guess for all we know, it could be, of course, you as well. All you need is a little bit of determination, a little bit of equipment, and free time to look at the night skies and then analyze the data. And so if you'd like to learn more about this particular amateur team, or if you'd like to learn how to do this yourself, check out some of the links in the description, and, well, go and find something out there. And if you do, send me a message once you do so that I can make a video about it as well. I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching. Come back tomorrow to learn something else and subscribe if you still haven't. Maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences and maybe consider supporting this channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description below. Either way, I'll see you tomorrow. Space out and as always, bye-bye.